Hey guys, my name is Michael McFadden and I'm head of the Reptile and Amphibian Department here at Taronga. I'm out here today to show you the new, brand new Northern Crabbery Frog Conservation Breeding Facility. Uh, this has only just opened, we've only just got the frogs in here very, very recently um, and I'm excited to show you in there. They're a little bit different to the Southern Crabbery Frogs which we have just across the road over here, uh, but in here today we'll check out the Northern Crabbery Frogs. You may be able to hear a little bit of background noise in this facility and that's because this is a refrigerated facility. Uh, at this time of year, it's the breeding season, so the temperatures are comfortable 20 degrees Celsius in the daytime. However, during the winter time, we cool this facility right down, and these frogs are down to about 4 to 5 degrees Celsius, and that's because of where they're found. So crabby frogs, the northern crabby frogs, is found, they're found down in the kind of the alpine or subalpine region of Australia, so down in the mountains of northern Kosciuszko and into even to the Magi, into the, uh, the ACT. So they're in that cooler climate, high altitude region. Uh, so as a result, we try, to, we try to replicate that environment here in the facility. So the northern crowry frog is one of our most endangered species in Australia. It's critically endangered. The populations have, have crashed dramatically since the mid-1980s when Kipriflungus first arrived in that area. Uh, and the numbers now are really low. So here at Taronga, we have an insurance population of this species uh, with our partners, including ZPIE through the Saving Our Species program, and our other partners, including Cadbury, to house an insurance population of this species. So if they do disappear from the wild, we have the genetics of this, this species well represented here at the zoo, and also so we can breed them and produce numbers for reintroduction efforts, which, which are currently underway and have been for the last 10 years. Unfortunately, uh, in early 2020, the bushfires that we saw moving through southeastern Australia did impact on the northern crabby frog, and about 70% of the remaining populations of northern crabby frogs were impacted by some degree to, by the bushfires. And as a result of that, we're able to access funding from the federal government and from Cadbury to build this facility. Uh, which has enabled us now to really capacity build for the future for these guys. So over the next decade, we'll be able to breed large numbers of these species. So here in this facility, something pretty special is happening at the moment. I don't know if you can hear the sound of the frogs calling, but th this time of year, for only around the, maybe a six week period, the male frogs are calling away like crazy. So we've put the males in these breeding tanks and the males have set up little nest chambers between the moss and, and the gravel and they've started calling away for females and the callings really just started peaking up over the last week or so. And as I talk, you may be able to notice, you may not, but when I talk, the frogs tend to respond back as well. So when they hear me, they think I'm another male frog calling and they give off a territorial call. So I give off a little yell to these frogs. Yay! There's a couple of territorial males there that gave off their territorial call at us. Often the response is you hear repeated calling and they, they change from their advertisement call to their territorial call, pretty much saying, go away, these are my ladies in this tank, um, find your own breeding site and nest. And that's one of the ways we survey for these species in the wild. We shout at the species, they call back at us and we're able to establish where they are and how many are left in the, in the wild. So these are our breeding tanks. Yet over on this side of the facility, we have our, our holding enclosures. So this is where the frogs live in for most of the year. Uh, they've got their nice UVB lights up above them to allow them to have access to UVB. And these are the, the tanks that we, we actually rear the frogs in, feed them up in. Uh, in front of me here, you can see some of the insurance population that we've only collected from eggs this last season. So these frogs here come from one of the fire impacted areas. We collected them as eggs. We collected a very small number of eggs from a, from, from a number of nests throughout their range. We've reared them up to metamorphosis and now they're here to represent an insurance population uh, from that region. And then behind me here, we have an insurance population uh, from another region. We've got a range of males and females uh, that will be used for breeding, or they might be those that aren't quite yet at maturity. Uh, this frog species takes about three to four years to mature. So they're a slow living species um, and they're rearing up in these uh, power pens behind me here at the moment. Uh, they only just got a feed this morning. So here at Taronga Zoo, we've been working with the Northern Crabby Frog now for over a decade. And our intention is to work with this species for many decades to go. They're still in a precarious state. Uh, so with the intervention of zoos like Taronga Zoo and the work we're doing with the species, hopefully we can ma maintain that they don't go extinct and we can rebuild population numbers. And here in this facility alone, we can house up to 600 Northern Crabby Frogs. Uh, we can rear through thousands of eggs and tadpoles for reintroduction. So with this facility, hopefully these frogs will be in a, in a, in a better state. And here at Taronga Zoo, you can see this facility at any stage. Uh, people come and view through the wi viewing window. You can see our frogs in our breeding tanks and through the back here. So it's a good way for people to come to the zoo, become educated about the northern crabby frog, read the graphics, and actually check out the little frogs in action moving around. 